develop a complete mind, study the science of art. Study the art of science. Learn to see. Realize that everything connects to everything else. Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo were among a select group of artists who were participating in human dissections during the 14th and 15th centuries in Renaissance Italy. In Italy and throughout much of Europe, dissections were highly restricted. They were seen as an act against God and sacrilegious by many. And so therefore, participating was still often shrouded in secrecy. They had pretty much disappeared throughout much of the medieval period in Europe and had only been recently reintroduced into the course of study of anatomy in university in the 14th centuries in Italy. Now, Leonardo and Michelangelo and their art and science colleagues were not unique. There were many investigative anatomists at this time, and there were many artists interested in anatomy. This was the Renaissance. It was a period of rebirth and knowledge, and individuals were being encouraged to be curious, to question new systems and old beliefs, and to investigate, experiment, and really find observations that could potentially improve humankind. This is why they took the risks. During the medieval period, much of the inquiries into the body were limited to the surface and any fluids that you could analyze. During the Renaissance, it was exciting because now they could look beneath the surface and really investigate the interior mechanisms of the body and try to see the functionings of the body both in a healthy and diseased state. As an art historian, I never thought that I would make a connection between art and medicine. I'm a trained modernist with areas of specialization in Islamic and Renaissance art. Certainly, I had seen images throughout my course of studies and teaching that were related. I have been teaching as a generalist for the last 20 years, everything from prehistoric through contemporary art. So I also would make simple connections between art and medicine, as we all do. You go to the pediatrician's office and you see images of Norman Rockwell. Or you're in the dentist's office and you look up and you see an image of Monet's water lilies. Both comforting within a rather sterile environment, an environment that at times can be filled with anxiety depending on the situation. I have also directed and advised pre-art therapy majors at different points in my career, grading their final portfolios, and I've seen my colleagues in our education and occupational therapy, physical therapy, and psychology use art to train their students to have specific activities once they graduate and they're working with their own students or patients to get them to communicate more openly about their pain, their emotions, and create narratives that may help in any given situation. I have taken, um, sorry. I was asked to teach a medical arts, arts observation course here at Missouri Southern about six years ago. And I, to be honest, was really quite intimidated to teach such a course because I don't really know much about medical humanities. I was asked to develop an art appreciation course that would be specific for those students that were majoring in medicine specifically initially to a exemplary cohort of students that we have that arrive on campus every fall. And they spend their first three foundational years here training and taking classes for mostly their general education curriculum. And the medical arts observation course was specific to serve to replace their fine arts elective. I instantly went to the internet to try to figure out how could I make a class that was impactful, how could I make a class that was meaningful, and that would be long-lasting, that would make connections well beyond the classroom, well beyond their time here, well beyond their time at KCU, and would be a class that would teach them something more than just looking at art. Um, certainly, the main goal was to develop a course that was similar to art appreciation. So I was instantly led to 
the foundational, uh, foundational class at Yale University that was initially um, originated with research that was done by Erwin Braverman in 1998. Dr. Braverman realized that his medical students were not making deep enough connections in their observations of medical illustrations and other images. He wanted them to think about these observations differently. And so what happened at Yale University is they took students, med students, out of the traditional classrooms into art history museums. And with medical faculty, art historians began to teach these students how to look at images. Some might say, how is that impactful? How is that useful? Well, looking at an art image within the museum context, you are essentially looking at the image in a similar way that you are looking at a patient. You are basically dissecting the image and looking at the details, going beneath the surface, and doing art historical analyses also working through what we call visual training strategies, or VTS, which is another branch of art historical analysis and is often used in museums or art historical classrooms to analyze images. They found in Yale that this was a very effective way to get students to develop their communication skills, enhance their observational skills, enhance their analytical and critical thinking skills, and essentially notice the difference. And this was really key in what they were trying to develop overall within their curriculum in terms of how patients were, how physicians were communicating with their patients. I have taken my research out of the classroom and I have gone across the country to look at medical arts images. I've traveled to Chicago, St. Louis, San Diego, DC, Indianapolis, and Bloomington, Indiana, and at each of these instances, I was specifically searching for and looking for images that were related to medicine and art. And always in my pre-trip preparation for my research, I would search terms such as anatomy, disease, health, illness, and there would be a long list of images. There has been a long collaboration, interdisciplinary collaboration between medicine and art. And these, this collaboration has been far-reaching in terms of making connections into the community. Through my research, I have developed an image database of medical art images, of approximately 350 images. And I'm now working with a group of scholars here at MSSU and at Wabash College and independent scholars in Indiana. They are scholars that are in art education, art history, and they're medical scholars in biology or medicine. And what we are attempting to do at this point is take these images that I have gathered, both in my research trips and those that I have found on the internet, and further expand this database to include what we call medical art case studies. So currently, the vast majority of my 350 images have a diagnosis, as you can see here on the screen. You can see with Michelangelo's night, scholars have identified what they think is a potentially a breast cancer diagnosis. Not likely something that Michelangelo is intending to show. Most of the images where we have assigned these diagnoses are things that we are now observing. More than likely, potentially, it was something that was present within the model that he was using. And we are wanting to move beyond just the diagnoses and create a database of images that have both a medical case study as reviewed by those within the field of medicine, and an art historical, art historical case study as reviewed by those within art history, and combine our interests together to create one medical art case study. We would like to create such a database to be useful for those within the field of medicine, the field of art history, those that are teaching medical arts observation, students, the public, just anyone who might have interest. We're also hoping to develop a textbook to be used in classes, because since Dr. Braverman's initial course at Yale University, there are now approximately, from our last count, approximately 250 classes being taught across the country in various medical schools. And so most certainly, these initial classes have been impactful. And Dr. Braverman's post questions, questions that he asked his students, sometimes years after taking the class, how this experience affected their practice as physicians. Did it make any difference? 
And he asks them the question of, how do you now feel about yourself as an observer? He says that an overwhelming amount of these students will answer by saying, I thought that I was really good at making observations and making these connections, but now I realize that I really was only approaching it from a rather superficial place. And this class, because I was taken out of just a standard classroom and being taught in a very specific way, I was now put in an art museum. I was forced to make new connections because I was put in an uncomfortable situation, something that was unfamiliar, something that was different. I was looking at different types of images, so therefore making new connections. I see this every time I teach my medical arts observation course. I use this image three times over the course of eight weeks. This is an online class, and I feel that it's just as effective as the classes where they go into art museums and they look at artwork in person. What this class is doing is it is teaching them to observe, critically think through problems, analyze things that we do throughout the university in uh, many disciplines, um, but certainly in this very specific context. They do peer-reviewed, they read peer-reviewed journal articles and, and have reading summaries. They also do observational drawing activities and art historical analyses on a wide variety of images and types of objects. Rembrandt's Dr. Poulp Anatomy Lesson is an image that I use within the first week, and I ask them a very basic question. I say, tell me, what do you see? And they have to list everything that they see within this image. I typically get about eight to 10 observations, and they have to do a little reflection in terms of how did they feel that this, this activity was effective. I don't really get much of a response at this point other than I, I made these observations. In week three, I return to this image after they've done a number of art historical analyses, and they have done some observational activities, and they've done a wide variety of readings, and I ask them to look at this image again. So the first time I asked them to not just tell me what they see, but they had to set a timer for three minutes. No more, no less. They had to stop once that timer hit three minutes. Now, for the second time, I asked them to look at this image for five minutes, near double the time, and I get almost double the amount of observations. And in the reflection, they tell me, this was much harder. Now you're asking me to not just tell you what I see in the image, but now I have to make connections. They look at this image for the last time in week seven, and they now have to set the timer for 10 minutes. And they have to again tell me what they see, they have to tell me again about the connections, but now they have to go deeper into the analyses. And they have to start making judgments about what they're seeing, and they have to start bringing in more of these comparisons and look at the basic elements of art and principles of design. And in their reflections, almost every student tells me, I didn't think that I could see anything else, 10 minutes. It's a long time, but I begin to look at things such as gazes, gestures, skin tone, the discoloration of the skin of the figure on the table, the wood grain. I'm now looking at scars on the figures, anything that I could just get from this image. I was really reaching, and I was really seeing so much more than I thought that I could ever see by looking at this image a third time and for such a long amount of time. So observation is key. Accurate observation is even more essential, especially when practicing medicine or working within the, the, uh, the health fields in general. Because we do now offer this class to those within the health sciences and just the bio, biomedical students in general, but it's really a class that applies to any field that requires accurate observation, such as psychology or criminal justice. It is a class that forces them to see the details, to understand the difference between just looking and seeing. And most importantly, in my mind, it really gets them to distinguish difference. Many, much of the research that has come out from these classes with a wide variety of universities that are now teaching this class and are following these students, they are finding that one additional key thing that is being taught within these classes is that of cultural empathy and also noticing difference, especially when it comes to race and gender. And that's huge. If you think about it, think about we're teaching these students how to communicate better with their patients. They're going out into the community, and they're making these greater connections. And they're looking at things beyond the surface. 
They're looking less superficially, and they're becoming better observers. So science and art have been connected throughout the centuries. And we have seen it all the way back to the medieval period and beyond. They're making diagrams of the body, such as the wound man here. Um, and this is happening both in Western and non-Western cultures. We're seeing this, again, as an essential collaboration. You have artists that are visualizing memory through their illustrations and through their drawings. And you have scientists that are dictating their research. And they are then, therefore, making even further connections when they return to look at the illustrations and coming up with their own um, solutions to problems that relate to illness and disease. I end my semester uh, with a medical arts observation, uh, observation course with these two images. It's the last analysis that they do. It's the only one that they do in week eight. And now they have to go through the similar steps of art analyses. But now they're looking at something that's real life, something that they can really connect to in terms of what they're going to be doing once they leave medical school. They have to write a four-page analysis comparing these two images. They have to tell me what they see, tell me what connections, if any, there are. Can you further develop that analysis? Is there any sort of narrative that you see? But now I tell them there is a diagnosis to be seen within these images. Certainly, the image on the left is more obvious because they talk about the discoloration of the skin. They talk about some of the, the they talk about symmetry. They get into the, the the face of the infant, the eyes, the arms. The hand is a little bit more difficult because it just looks like a normal hand. But as they work through the analyses, they always pick up on the fact that there are black spots on the hand. Now, in my six years of teaching this with nearly a hundred students, they. Almost, I haven't had a single student yet figure out the actual diagnosis that is present here, um, because it is, these are both very rare vascular conditions, but they almost always pick up on the fact that this is a vascular condition. And it is an important comparison here, because the rest of the course, they've been mostly looking at art images. They've been mostly looking at art objects. Now they're looking at something that's real life, and again, they're making deeper connections they are now feeling more confident applying the skills for the first seven weeks to this final assignment in the last week and, and really realizing the importance of what they have accomplished throughout the, the entire course. So what are we doing here throughout the course of this seven, eight weeks? What we're doing is we're teaching them about difference. We're teaching them about looking beyond the surface. We're teaching them about observation. We're teaching them that the sciences are not encapsulated, that medicine is not encapsulated within the sciences, that medicine can have important collaborations with other disciplines, and that there are other ways to make these connections. I leave you with this quote. Wherever art of medicine is loved, there is also a love of humanity. Thank you.